Jean-Claude Van Damme and Dolph Lundgren play members of an experimental military strike force in Universal Soldier. It's nothing robotic like some movies where a guy uh, like half human, half machine. It's uh, pure, 100% pure beef. I think right now we're spending a lot of money on weapons, high-tech weapons, and maybe the next step is to try to start redesigning the human being who's behind the weapon. And they use them as the perfect ultimate soldier, but they have the same kind of spirit for freedom than the Frankenstein wants to have. The Unisols are about to be revealed as the final word in high-tech weaponry when something goes terribly wrong. I get involved because I'm a reporter, I play Veronica Roberts, and uh, I sneak in to try to get some pictures and, and see what's going on, and uh, I get caught. When ordered to kill Veronica, long-buried emotions explode to the surface, pitting one super soldier against the other. And then we're off and running. Actually, this is great. Wow. It's not safe for you to hear. Where are your clothes? I have to cool down. Uh... Jean-Claude is perfect for this role because the character is not your standard action superhero. It's a character that has to show a great Just deal breathe. of vulnerability. There must be a tracking device on me. Well, what do you want me to do about it? Look for something unusual. Something hard. He's going to protect the lady, the female reporter, in some situation, but sometimes he'll need her like a baby. I'm sort of the catalyst that, that gets him to think about his human side. You know, he does things he doesn't know why he does them, and I start to ask questions and pull him out. What the hell did they do to you? I don't know. But I'm going to find out. She's helping me 50 50. It's like a team effort. You were acting. <laughs> Ali Walker, she's a very special lady. Very charming. Very charming. Full of charm. Always happy on the set, no matter what. <laughs> you guys should see my body. I mean, well, I mean, without clothes, it's pretty scary. Let me tell you, I am black and blue from about here to here. It's not fun, it's not pretty. <laughs> you know? Follow me. I really enjoy it. I mean, I really get into it. It's funny because I didn't think I would. It's just juiced. You're constantly going. You know, you just jam, jam, jam because of it. So it's, it's kind of nice, actually. It's, it's fun. Dolph is a great villain. I mean, I think he really is creating the kind of character that's really original and fresh. Did you like that, Did you like that? I think any action movie is only as good as its villain. And that's always true. You can be more theatrical, you can be a little crazier, you can really play a juicy character. The two of them both in stature, physical presence, they, they play off each other fantastic. They've gotten along just great on the picture. Hey Dolph, look at, look at there. He's always late, always come late on the set. You know, I mean, this is not good. Really? He has to learn. Who is this? Huh? Are, you, are you an extra? <laughs> the renegade soldier's epic battle is enhanced by the capabilities of the Unisol truck, a portable laboratory, command center, and arsenal. Well, obviously, if you take a guy who's a pretty mad guy, crazy, you give him, what, a hundred-foot truck full of high-tech weapons and let him loose somewhere, you know, you're going to have a lot of fun situations <laughs> for people to deal with. Those days, it was kind of the Wild West. You could get away with almost anything. I'm alive. It was 1991, actually, and I think I just got the script. It was called Crystal Knights, the first version. It wasn't that great, but, you know, my agent and my lawyer, they, they said, oh, you know, there's this other actor, Jean-Claude Van Damme, who I'd kind of heard of. You know, he was like a kind of a younger, action guy at the time. 
Roland came on board. Dean was the writing partner of Roland, and he had a different take. They rewrote the script, and now the script became better now. It was a Karolko days. Mario Kassar uh, wanted us to do Universal Soldier. Mario Kassar, well, you know, he was the king, you know? I mean, he was, he had all the stars, all the big directors. Well, Karolko at the time had been making one hit right after another, and it had become this place that filmmakers really liked to work because not only did you get paid more, but you had a lot more creative freedom. And they had a series of successful films. I mean, they, they had probably the best run of mm -hmm. hits yeah. of independent movie companies ever. From Angel Heart to Basic Instinct to Total Recall, Terminator, Rambo. He liked the big spectacular Hollywood epics, really. That was his style. And, and it worked for our movie because that's what we were. Do you want to play cash? I came just from Germany. I was like kind of nine months in the yeah. country. Now, I had like some inkling about what it is. I roughly also knew the concept, but I had uh, I had to really ask, you know, who are the actors in it? And he said to me, like, kind of, I want with Dolph Lundgren and Jean-Claude Van Damme. And I said, I know Dolph Lundgren, but who is Jean-Claude Van Damme? You know, it's how naive I was, you know? And he was like totally against it. He said, like, you cannot do this movie. And then I said, like, you know what? It's a chance to do a movie. You know, we have like uh, 20 million dollars. So let's do a movie, you know, let's be adult about these things. And then we had like really fun, right? Making yeah. this movie. He physically had done some amazing things. So we knew that we could put him in any kind of physical situation and be fine. The, the question is, we didn't really know what the acting chops were. And I gotta tell you that, that it was, I think the biggest surprise during the shoot is that emotionally as an actor, he was very available. So many things are missing. First time I met Jean-Claude, I think up at Coralco. Uh, I liked him, nice guy. Martial artist, very youthful, very, very uh, spontaneous. Can uh, somebody show me how to swim? Lots of energy, lots of uh, ideas about his career. A very smart guy with his, himself and his career. At that time, he was like really the new guy on the block. The biggest guy was still Arnold Schwarzenegger and, and Sylvester Stallone. I have to give it to him. He has uh, a certain quality, you know, there's like some innocence uh, about him. What the hell did they do to you? I'm alive. The final climax of the picture was, was partially rehearsed and partially was just come up with by me and Jean-Claude on, on the spot. Some of the moves didn't work because of the rain and because of uh, location. Also, we wanted to add some special stuff. We actually went back for two weeks and reshot stuff and added moves to the fight because it was a little too short, people felt, you know, in the first, first version. <laughs> Yeah, Jean-Claude had his, you know, signature spin kicks and jump kicks. I kind of felt that. I wanted to show some brute strength, you know, kind of throwing him through walls and, and things of this nature. Vic Armstrong, second unit director and stunt coordinator, designed some extraordinary action sequences, taking full advantage of the Universal Soldier's incredible strength and abilities. I think a good action picture always has to have a reason for the action happening. I, I hate going to cinema myself and just seeing action for the sake of it. Also, there's a lot of humor kind of built in, in the story, so there's a contrast between uh, action, brutality and, and fun. Just want to eat. For three months, the cast and crew braved the dangers of desert shooting, where temperatures reached a scorching 115 degrees. We, especially on the dry lake bed that we worked on, we had plumes of dust going two or three hundred feet in the air from these trucks. And of course, when the wind's wrong, the whole crew eat it, cameras and everything. But by far, the most intense location was Hoover Dam, where the filmmakers created a never before attempted action sequence. The stunts we do involve scaling down the wall of the dam, which is about 700 and some feet. You know, repelling has been done a lot, but we did this Australian style, as we call it, which is facing forwards. Action! And it looks as though guys are just running down there, which, you know, gives it another a different look. And some of the wide shots, you suddenly get the perspective and the scale of the whole thing when you see the dam so vast and two little fly specks coming down, and then you zoom in or cut in closer as you would every one. That would be very spectacular. In itself, that's an, an amazing feat for anybody to do. And I think people are going to be tuned into this because they've never seen it before. 
It's, it's really one of these films where everything comes together, you know. It's in every scene, there are special effects, uh, big machines, planes, helicopters. Yeah. Big toys. Big, definitely. A lot of big toys. Big toys for grown-up boys. Yep. It's a great movie.